Now, I've held a lot of jobs in my day. Dishwasher, busboy, fast food cook, quality control for a medical tube manufacturer, sales clerk, pizza delivery, call center operator, trainer, and even management. But the job that started it all was delivering papers in a small town in eastern Kansas back in the early to mid-80s. Here's the thing, though. Not once did I ever meet a group of loyal friends or get shot accidentally by one of them or encounter time travelers or have adventures through time or any of that stuff. I mean, what a ripoff, right? Anyway, this is episode 209, Paper Girls, Volume 1. Welcome to another episode of Just Another Fanboy. I'm your host. My name is Steven. And as September wanes and October winks at us from the end of the week, I bring you today the first ever Just Another Fanboy Book of the Month. Before we get into the book y'all chose for September, I'm going to go ahead and announce October's book. And it's Green Arrow Year One by Andy Diggle and Jock. So get that sucker read and send your thoughts to feedback at justanotherfanboy.com. Now, for today, for September, we're talking about Paper Girls Volume 1 by Brian K. Vaughn and Cliff Chang. This collects issues 1 through 5 from Image Comics and was published as a collection on March 30th, 2016. The story takes place in the early morning hours of November 1st, 1988, in the town of Stony Stream, Ohio. We meet a girl. Her name is Erin. She's 12 years old, and she's waking up the morning after Halloween, and she's going out to deliver her papers. While she's out there delivering, she is bullied by a teenager, but three other young 12-year-old paper girls come to her rescue, Mac, KJ, and Tiffany. These three decide to include Aaron in their group and deliver the papers together. They separate two to a team to deliver their papers so that nobody gets bullied because apparently it was a problem in that town for these paper girls to get bullied by teenagers. And so as they are out delivering their papers in their two teams, one of the two girls or one of the teams of two girls are attacked by a group of teenagers, but the teenagers are dressed like ninjas. Now, because this is the morning after Halloween, there's still a lot of teenagers out from the night before in their costume, just getting into trouble as they do in a small town. Well, each of this, each of the teams here of these two girls, they have a walkie talkie and one of these ninja teenager guys steals the walkie talkie from Tiffany. I think it's Tiffany and KJ in one group and then Aaron and Mac in the other group. Mac is kind of a, a tomboy. She swears a lot and she smokes. KJ, she's kind of like, she's the smart one of the group. They call her Cage sometimes. And Tiffany is, she's a, she's a gamer. She plays like the Atari 2600 and junk like that. Aaron is a new kid. They call her new kid a lot. She uh, she attends a Catholic school called St. Pete's and Tiffany attends that school as well. But she's she's new to town. So she's the new kid to them. Well, the four of them get back together to find these teenagers to 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 get their walkie talkie back. And that starts them off on just this crazy adventure that good Lord, I don't know how many volumes this sucker. Let's see here. We got it goes for 30 issues. And uh, or six regular volumes, five, I think it's five issues per volume. They did three deluxe hardcovers that collects all 30 issues. And then they did a, a compendium. Just, I guess, this giant book. Well, I guess it's coming out in October and it's going to collect all 30 issues. That seems like a like a pretty big book. Anyway, at one point, they chase these teenage ninja dudes into this abandoned house. There's this area of town that's under development, and there's a lot of, you know, houses that are under construction, new housing, and they they 
they go into one of these houses because they see that a window is open. And so they climb in there to see if these uh, ninja teenagers are there because that's the last place they saw them was heading in that direction. And they find what looks like a freaking space pod or something down in the basement. And it starts humming and making a lot of noise and, and just all kinds of weird things just start happening to them. Suddenly, many of the people within the town just disappear. They run across some kid in a werewolf mask who's just standing there in the middle of the street. And he is he's not moving at all. And they try to talk to him and he won't move and he won't acknowledge their existence in any way. And so they go to to, to walk away from them or from the dude. And when they they turn their back on him and when they turn back to look at him, he's gone. And then they encounter the ninja teenager dudes again, and they speak some kind of really weird language that they don't un- that the the girls don't understand. There's a uh, they get into kind of a fight with one, and they rip his mask off of him, and he's really he's he's quite deformed. In fact, one of the girls compares him to I think his name is Rocky Dennis from the movie Mask that was out around that time who was a, a, a real person. Um, but he had, uh, I, I don't know what the, I don't know if it's the same thing that the elephant man had uh, just on his face, but he's scarred up and he's, he's got these big swollen lumps on his face and all this junk. And, 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 and again, these ninja dudes talk in like this very weird language that none of them recognize. They end up back at Mac's house and they find Mac's stepmother there, Alice. And she's talk. She basically tells them that it's uh, Revelation that the the or, or what's it, what is it called um, from from the Book of Revelations when all of God's chosen are taken up to heaven and anybody who is um, not a believer is left on the earth as the earth is coming to an end and there's all these trials and tribulations that they have to live through and all this junk and so that's what that's what uh, Alice or Max. Alice is her name, but Max's stepmother, whose name is Alice, that's what she believes is going on. She's an alcoholic and she's drunk and she's got a gun and they they get the gun from her and they end up going back out into the night. Uh, Maybe when they're wrestling the gun from her is when at one point Aaron gets shot. And I can't honestly, good Lord, I just read all these books just just within the last couple of days. But Aaron gets shot accidentally by one of the one of the four girls. I think it was Mac that accidentally shoots her. But they learn that. Uh, so it's just such a uh, 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 just a bunch of weird stuff just happens throughout these five issues. And and I'm trying to put it all together in my head in, in the way it all worked out. But we there another group of people show up in this town and they wear this white armor and they ride frickin flying dinosaurs and they speak English, but they speak it in a very weird dialect. It's almost like they're speaking, I don't know, like like a futuristic Internet lingo or something like that. And we learn eventually that both of these groups are time travelers. The ninja guys are they, they're just referred to as teenagers. And uh, the 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 others in the in the white armor are called the old timers. And they have been intertwined in some kind of generational war throughout time for however long I'm, I'm not sure they don't really get into it that much in, in, in this, but there there's a guy that leads the old timers and he's, he is old and he's got long white hair and a long white beard. And first time you see him, he's wearing a public enemy t-shirt. And uh, they apparently when they're the, these, the, these teenagers, these time traveling teenagers, they go back in time and scavenge, um, Scavenge and steal, scavenge, 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 just, to, well, I was going to say just ignore me, but if you ignored me, you'd stop listening to the show and we don't want that to happen. But uh, they're back scavenging from from the past to fund and fight the war in the future. And the old timers have these little discs on their on their throats that they can use as a translator to talk to people from. Well, in this case, in 1988, and it's almost like because we find out at one point in the volume that all these people that have disappeared, they are in wherever the leader of the old timers 
wherever he's at, they're with him in like these stasis pods. So it's it's almost like they're having one of their battles. The you know these these uh, teenagers have come back to 1988 to steal whatever they need to steal. And the old timers have come to hunt him down and stop him. And so that that people from that timeline don't witness what is going on. They are secretly uh, taken somehow and put in stasis. And I'm assuming they will be put back before or by whenever the this conflict is done, they'll be put back uh, without having missed any time. Maybe I, I don't know. Or, or I'm just I'm just guessing at this point. But for some reason, these four girls, these four paper girls were not they did not end up becoming what part of whatever process it was that take that took all these people and stuck them in these stasis pods. And maybe we're to assume that it's because they were next to this time pod thing in the basement of this house when everything happened and something about being near it caused them to not be caught up in this. And so they're running around um, Stony Stream in 1988 with uh, two different factions of warriors from the future that are, you know, again, engaged in this freaking battle throughout time. And uh, they're just kind of stuck in the middle of it. And Aaron, like I said, Aaron gets shot by Mac on accident and they encounter, they, they take Mac's parents' car. Um, I think it's Tiffany that kind of knows how to drive. So they're trying to drive to the hospital and they get caught by one of these old timers on this giant dinosaur. And before they can try to get away or try to fight their way out of this, this uh, problem they're in. Uh, and, it, and it's really weird because this, this old timer who, who looks rather young, she, she sees them and she's basically telling them, or, or, or may have been a dude. I think it's the dude. Cause they encounter and they talk to two of them. And the first one I think is a dude and he he suddenly realizes that they are not that they're that they are people from this timeline and so once he realizes that he's trying to talk to them in his weird futuristic internet speak and once he realizes that they are leftovers they they were not put into stasis with all the others he uses his little translator disc and he's like look I, i'm sorry that you got mixed up in this you're not supposed to be involved let me let me do something to try to help you and 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 we're assuming he's probably going to take them i mean i assume by the end of the of the volume that he was probably going to take them and put them in the stasis pods. But then the teenager, the future teenagers show up and they shoot the guy dead and they see that Aaron has been shot and they steal the guy's translator and they tell they tell the other three that they can help her, but they have to follow them. And they go through the sewers and they come out into the into the woods. And there's another one of these pods out there, these time pods and these the, the two dudes, the two teenager ninja dudes get into the pod with with Aaron. And once they're inside the pod and it seals up, it zaps itself away. And the other three are kind of left behind and they don't know what's going on. And they have an encounter with another one of the old timers and they manage to uh, they because they've still got the gun on them, but the gun is no longer loaded. And I think it's. I think it's Tiffany because at one point as they're running through the sewers, the old timers unleash this weird freaking cybernetic TV screen wielding freaking strange futuristic octopus creature. That's kind of more like a beholder from the, uh, from Dungeons and Dragons with all these tentacles with eyeballs on the tentacles, except for their TV screens and the TV screens have eyeballs on them. And, and it w- it touches Tiffany and she is uh, suddenly she relives, you know, they say before you die, you, you, you relive your life and she relives her life. And most of it is her playing this freaking video game. And so when they, they end up killing the thing, the, the beholder thing that's trying to get them and they get away and all this stuff happens. And Aaron goes into the time machine thing and they get away and the three are left by themselves. And one of these old timers on one of these flying dinosaurs is like, look, it's too late at this point. There's nothing, you know, basically she's, she's basically like, I'm going to have to kill these guys, these, these kids, because I'm pretty sure that's what she's thinking is, is, uh, you know, because it's too late. They've seen too much. Right. And so Tiffany has the gun and she, she's like, we're not going anywhere with you. And this lady's like, you're not going to shoot me. And she goes, no, but I'll shoot your freaking dinosaur. 
And then the lady's like, fine, fine, don't shoot my dinosaur. And she's got this big staff that's a weapon. And she hands it to Mac. And as Mac's taking a hold of it, she presses a she accidentally presses a button on it with her thumb. And it it fires this freaking ray bolt out of it and knocks the old timer onto her butt. And she hits her head and she's knocked out. And and one of the girls is like, OK, we're, you're no longer allowed to hold weapons that may accidentally fire and kill somebody because she's the one that that shot Aaron. And then we find out that Aaron is is uh she's 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 in a and basically a, a spaceship is what they call it that can actually also travel through time and she's got all these bugs on her and they're repairing her gunshot wound and and uh the other three realize that the space pod that they found in the basement is the same one that Aaron was in and that maybe that's where she is now and so they go back to the back to the uh the abandoned home and, and they go down to the basement and the pod opens up and Aaron's there and She's she's uh she's been fixed, she's been healed, but the two ninja teenager dudes die for some reason. Something happens and it makes them die. They don't really explain. And then suddenly, as uh the uh, basically an entire army of old timers surround the house and they're the the leader comes out and he's telling them that they have to come out and something happens and the whole ta- the whole house just zaps out of existence the same way that the time pods do when they the spaceships when they zap out of existence. And then they are, they are thrown back to uh like they land somewhere in the street in Stony stream. And, but it's only three of them. One of them's not there. I think KJ isn't there or maybe Tiffany, one of those two are not there. And a car pulls up and a woman gets out and Aaron's like, uh, like, hello, my, my name is Aaron, whatever her last name is. And Aaron Ting, I think is her last name. And uh, we are paper girls for the Cleveland Observer and blah, 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 blah. And this woman's like, what are you talking about? My name is Aaron Ting. And it's Aaron, like 12 years later, 12, 13, 14, 15 years later, however much further into the future they are suddenly, uh, they suddenly find themselves. And that's how this, this collection ends. That's how the first five issues end. It is a, it's a very, very intriguing story. I mean, I always have enjoyed time travel stories. And I always find it very interesting that whoever is telling a time travel story, they always have their own rules about time travel. For example, if you look at Back to the Future compared to this, one of the things that they say in this in this, uh, in this this book is they refer to the time pod thing as a spaceship. And the guy's like, well, think about it. The Earth is constantly moving through space. So if you time travel from where you're at to the same place a year or a week or however far into the future or into the past, you might find yourself floating in space because the Earth is no longer occupying that space at that time. Whereas in Back to the Future, it, that's not the way it worked at all. It was, you know, he just, he, he went back to from 85 to 55 and was in the exact same spot. So like with the TARDIS, you have to be able to travel through space and time at the same time. Uh, otherwise, you may not end up where you think you're going to end. And maybe that's what the uh, flux capacitor did. It, it it allowed them to travel through space and time. It's just happened at the same time. I don't know, but I find it very interesting, the different rules about um, the way time works and how if, you know, one of the teenagers says, if you die, then you die. It's That's something that you you can't prevent that from happening. We can't go back in time and stop that. That's if you die, that's that is is something that has to happen. Whereas in other time travel stories, they can go back in time and prevent that kind of stuff. So that's what I always find the most interesting about stories like this is just all the different rules that, you know, regardless, whoever's writing that time travel story, they come up with their own rules and they always make sense for that particular story. And I, I find that very interesting. And quite intriguing. Uh, the art by Cliff Chang is wonderful. This is one of those books that don't spend a lot of time um, with over the top colors. Matt Wilson is the colorist on this, and he uses a lot of flat colors and a little shading. And I love that more than than anything else. I, I just I've said it before. I can't stand it when people come in with this newfangled digital coloring process and they overdo it. It's you, you got to be subtle. You have to, I don't know. It's they, they, they try too hard to, um, 
use the colors to indicate uh, depth and whatnot on somebody's face, for example. And it just sometimes it's rare that somebody gets it right and it looks good and it's very impressive. But most of the time I see it, it just looks it just looks bad. And uh, I wish people would stop it. But Matt Wilson here is kicking butts on colors. It's very, like I said, a lot of flats, a lot of solid colors, uh, just a little bit of shading. And uh, I think it just works perfectly for this book. It's a very, it's not a, it's not, it's, it's, it's bright when it needs to be bright. It's dark when it needs to be dark. And it's, it's just, I think it's just the perfect blend. I don't know if he won any awards for this book, but he should have because it's beautiful. And you combine him with Cliff Chang's art and it just, it's a, it's a perfect team. And I, I don't know if they've done other stuff together, but if they did, I, I need to go look. I need to go see if, if they've teamed up on other books. And if not, they need to. They need to do more books together because they work really, really well together. Um, and I'm really looking forward to reading more of this series. Got 24, 20, 20. Good Lord, I can't talk. I got 25 more issues here to read because there's 30 total and I've read five. So eventually I'm going to move on to volume number two. I don't know if I'll talk about it here on the show. There's so much other stuff to talk about that I may or I may not. I don't know. Maybe I'll wait till I get them all done and then talk about the full series as a whole. But until then, folks, that's my episode. Before I leave you, I just want to remind you that I have a Patreon, patreon.com slash Stephen R. Or you can join for as little as a dollar a month. I have a, another podcast I do over there just for the patrons. It's called My Other Podcast. It releases every week, a um, little over 200 episodes. Well, I think we're at, by Wednesday, we'll be at 209. So same amount of episodes we have over here on Just Another Fanboy. Um, I've also got Event or Else out there. Just put a new episode up of Event or Else. That's a, a YouTube channel that I have where I'm going over most every major Marvel and DC event, one issue at a time. I'm currently in the middle of Crisis on Infinite Earths. The episode I released was for issue number five. You can find that out on YouTube. There's also an audio only version of that as well, which you can get wherever you get podcasts. But I'll make sure to put a link in the notes for the YouTube channel. Uh, other than that, hey, you know what? Tell, tell all your friends about me. Tell people about the show. If you if you listen to the podcast on a uh, podcatcher that allows you to rate and review I urge you to please go in and rate and review the show. Apple Podcasts, for example, you can go in and rate the show. Get in there and do that. The more ratings I get, the uh, I think there's a certain number of ratings that uh, that has to has to be there before a show can be added to various algorithms and and make it easier for other people to find it. So if you if you want to support the show, that's a great way to do it. Is to help more people find it. Until then, until you do that, or until I release another episode, my name is Steven, and I'm just another fanboy. Be nice to each other. Bye-bye, Daddy. Bye-bye, Daddy. Good job. <gasps>